Hey guys, welcome to the 115th C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to compute both MD5 and SHA1 hashes. And a hash is basically a number computed from data. And in MD5's case, it's always um, 16 bytes long, and in SHA1's case, it's always 20 bytes long. And with it being that length, it means that the likelihood of two different types of data or two different like datas being uh, hashed will be, be this being the same is very slim. So what you can do is, well this is mainly what hashes are used for, you like you hash um, a bunch of data and then um, save that hash and then when you're sending it to someone else or storing it or something like that, if you want to check to see if someone's tampered with it, you can always uh, calculate the hash of the file and compare the hashes and if they're different then someone most likely tampered with it. and But if they're the same, then no one tampered with it and it's perfectly fine. So the first um, hash that we're going to be calculating is MD5. So just uh, for this tutorial, you're going to need to have a text box and a button. And once you have those both on your form, just go ahead and double click on your button. For this tutorial, you're going to need to be using the system.security.cryptography namespace because um, both the, the classes that we're going to be using are in that namespace. So like I said, we're first going to be looking at calculating MD5. So to calculate MD5, you're first going to want to um, create a new instance of the MD5 crypto service provider class. Uh, I'm just going to call it MD5 and set it equal to a new um, MD5 crypto service provider. And that basically just means it's going to compute um, MD5. So in order to compute the hash, we're just going to say MD5 dot compute hash. This is the compute hash method. It's pretty simple. But right in here it calls for a byte array. So in order to convert this text box into a byte array, first going to have to create a new instance of the encoding encoding or UTF-8 encoding class. And I'll just call it UTF-8 and we'll set it equal to a new UTF-8 encoding class. And this is basically just a type of encoding used to store text. You don't really need to know much about it, just this is how we're going to be um, converting this text in this text box into a uh, byte array. So we're just going to do the name of our uh, UTF encoding class, and then we're just going to use the getBytes method in that class to convert the text into bytes. So we're just going to say text box wants text right here. And this will just return a byte array so then we can compute the hash of the text. And yeah. And then we're just going to display the hash in a text box. But in order to display in a text box, it has to be in a string. So we're going to convert um, this uh, MD5 hash. It returns a byte array. So we're going to have to convert that byte array into bit converter dot to string. So we're going to have to convert that into a string. And now we're just going to display that in a message box. All right, so that's a pretty long line of code there. But basically, we're just converting the uh, text box into a byte array, or the text in the text box into a byte array. Then we're hashing that, or MD5 hashing it. Then we're converting that hash back to a string so we can display it in a message box. So now I'm going to debug here, type in, type in Adam, click get hash, and as you can see that's a pretty long, I think that's 16 bytes long, and that's just the MD5 hash for Adam. So if we were to change even one letter and just change it to N, the hash would be completely different. And yeah, as you can see right there, it's like completely different than before. If we were to type in hello, if we were to type in or add another zero, it would just be completely different. So this is a great way to um, check to see if someone's uh, tampered with your data or to see if it's gotten there all the way or if it's, it's been transferred completely or something like that. And the next one that we're going to be looking at is SHA1 and that is a 20 byte long hash so it's a little bit more secure here. So we're going to say SHA1 uh, crypto service provider. I'll just call it SHA1 and we'll set it equal to a new SHA1 uh, crypto service provider. And just like before, we're going to have to get, uh, oops, 
we're going to have to turn the uh, text in the text box into a uh, byte array, so it's called UPF8. I probably shouldn't have deleted this, but whatever. Alright, so now we're just going to say SHA1.compute hash. And just like the MD5 one, this calls for a byte array, so we're going to have to use this UTF8 encoding class to um, get the bytes or convert the text into a byte array. So, get bytes, text box one's text. Just like before, we're going to convert this back, or convert that hash back into a string so we can display it in the message box. Uh, to string. And then we will just display this in a message box. Alright, so this basically just uh, converts the text into a byte array, uh, hashes it, converts it into SHA1 hash, converts that hash back into a string, and then displays that hash in a message box. So now I'm going to debug here, type Adam, should get a 20 byte long hash. Yep. Type in something else like Bob, get something completely different. We're going to type in BO, BO, which get something completely different than just Bob. And yeah, perfect. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial on computing MD5 and SHA1 hashes. So, see you guys.